Hey there fellow riders, so in this awesome video, we're gonna dive into the topic of counter steering on motorcycles and unravel the mysteries behind how it actually works. It's mind-blowing stuff, trust me. Picture this, when you want to turn left on your bike, instead of simply pushing the handlebars to the left side like you might expect, you actually need to give it a slight push in the opposite direction initially. Sounds bizarre, right? But here's why, by applying that initial counter steer in the opposite direction, it causes momentary imbalance in forces acting on the bike, which then allows you to successfully lean into your desired turn. It may seem counterintuitive at first, but once you grasp this technique and apply it instinctively while riding, you'll unlock a whole new level of control and maneuverability on your motorcycle. Trust me folks, this video is definitely worth checking out till the end if you want to up your riding game. I've created this video in two parts. You can skip ahead and get straight to the race in the next chapter of this video if you like. Now let's discover more about this awesome skill together. Make sure you subscribe to this channel now so you never miss any of my content. I release new videos every week and you wouldn't want to miss out. The wheel has two kinds of motion, a translational motion along with the vehicle and a rotational motion on its own axis. Let's get to it. So when you're out taking corners, you want to stay zero throttle until your steering and your lean are completed. So let's say you're going down the road at 60 kilometers per hour and you want to slow down to 30 kilometers per hour to take a right hand turn, right? So you're slowing down, you're off the throttle, you're on the brakes, downshift, whatever you need to do. But once you go to turn the bike, so you counter steer, you push right to make the bike lean to the right, push right, go right, or pull left. Counter steering is the same thing. Pushing right, pulling left, same thing. Either way, counter steer. So zero throttle, push right, go right, the bike will lean. And once the lean angle is done, your steering is completed then you could crack open the throttle a little bit. In a race, you crack open full throttle as early as possible. And then it depends on the type of a corner. If the corner is done, like 90 degree turn, if it's done right away, after you turn the bike, 0% throttle, and then you crack it open. Well, the bike's already facing the right direction and you can start to stand it up and stand the bike up and accelerate out of there. If it's a big 180 degree turn, you have to wait. You have to wait a little bit longer. So you're rolling off the throttle, 0% throttle. You're coming down into it. Make the bike turn right, push right. The bike will lean. Once your lean angle is done, like you're at the right amount of lean you need to make the turn, all your steering is completed, right? Keep on push, push, push until you're at the lean angle you want and then you can kind of relax the push a little bit. So once steering and lean angle is completed, then you could crack open the throttle just to maintain the speed. That's why it's called maintenance throttle, just to maintain the speed until you get all the way through the corner. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. And finally, once the bike is facing the right direction, you could start to take away the lean angle and stand it up then you could actually accelerate up and out of the corner. You don't need to accelerate until you could see where you're going and you can start to take away the lean angle. Wait for your steering to be completed and you're at the desired lean angle before you crack open the throttle. The bike has to be facing the right direction in order to accelerate. So this is the whole idea. So here's my throttle. See that as it stands up, you're rolling on the throttle. Here's my throttle, right? See that as it stands up, you're rolling on the throttle, but wait to crack open the throttle until your steering and lean angle are completed. Without further ado, let's dive into the race. Yeah, well, all the spectators here that have never been into the world of super sports or road racing, here's where it's at. Under four minutes, under four minutes here until we start our first split wave heat, the fifth qualifying race of the day, and again, the Rick Westbrook Memorial Vintage Class. Some of these bikes are a little bit older. Some are even older than some of our racers here, I must say. But the skills that they have here are just as entertaining and just as 
emotional when they get up on the podium for tomorrow's final. So please remember to do all fine races here for tomorrow's final. As far as two wheels here in southwestern Ontario, you're going to enjoy yourself here as you sit back and enjoy these racers. First wave, ready to rock. Racers ready. Watch the lights. There you go. What a start from the line. Holy cow. Somebody who has mechanical difficulties, Jim Alive, decided to uncork the cannon and get his way through. Now watch this young man. And I say young with all due respect, Jim Alive's probably got race tires older than half of that field. Let's skip ahead to the third lap since I prefer this video to be shorter. So this is the fifth round of SOAR series. We are racing on a Screaming Alien layout at the Grand Band Motorplex. As you can see I'm on full throttle and I'm not sure how big of a gap is between me and the guys behind me but since I'm leading the championship this year and I just don't want to risk it, I'm on full gas. This bike by the way is a 2003 Yamaha R6. If you're wondering why this bike sounds like that, why it pops the way it pops, it's probably because I've had to cut this Akropovic exhaust short at one point because when I was wheeling, this exhaust would scrape. So I just had enough of it and one day I just decided to cut it short a little bit and it did not make any difference in the power of the bikes actually faster. It's, it hasn't gotten any slower, it's only gotten faster, so I can tell you that much. Um, but it does sound off a little bit. Baruch Khan, your leader of the first wave, Joshua Hodgson. I really appreciate how low maintenance this bike is. Despite being a bit old, it remains highly competitive. In case it needs repairs, the costs are quite affordable and it offers endless possibilities for customization. I highly recommend this bike to anyone who wants to hit the track. Just running into a bit of lap traffic here. That's the thing about this race. There is quite a bit of lap traffic that can set you back. I also don't want to mess up their race, so I like to keep a distance. Here I'm doing my final turn before I get onto the back straight, pass one lap rider and now there's a few more, I think there's three more lap riders that I can see, there's one, there's two and one more. So a situation like this in a race can get bad if there's someone right next to me or if I'm racing shoulder to shoulder with another rider and there's this kind of lap traffic it can really mess up the race but that's the fun part about it Khan, your leader of the first wave into one here comes Hodgson you'll see Hodgson with that lean angle gets out his head way way out over the center of the machine and in third place Matt Barrage two different riding styles two older machines I say that with all respect due to the Rick Westbrook Memorial Vintage class that they are in
as we approach the final sweeping corner, I just want to remind you to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And across the third finish line, the first wave winner, that's Farouk Khan on the 101. He'll maintain and hold on to that first place grid position for tomorrow. Battling over the board in the first wave. Subscribe to this channel now to stay updated with all my latest content. Thanks for watching. Shiny side up, rubber side down. If you're looking for a mic for your YouTube videos, I'm personally using this shotgun mic. So if you're looking for something similar, definitely worth checking out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Thanks guys. Peace. Here's why. By adapting 